Anyways, uh, the rudder turned out well. Um, I'll have a video on the vertical stabilizer at a later time, but since this is gonna be one of the early videos, um, when I get it out, I only have my unboxing video or inventory video right now, I'm delivering inventory. I'm gonna go into some of the tools I found that sometimes later in the build that were really helpful. Obviously you want some sort of electric drill. I know they use that large uh, full-size drill, but I found this 12 volt one for sale with an impact wrench or impact driver. Um, like a hundred bucks Bosch. This is not the brushless motors. This is the normal one, but it works for drilling from a uh, previous Vans RV tail kit build. I have all the RV tools. So I definitely use my air drill for um, a lot of different match drilling. It um, makes really clean holes, high speed drill. It works well when you're doing a lot of holes and um, it does suck the air though. So I only use that when I'm, I got a line of holes, for instance, uh, here, the match drill on the spar for the, the forward spar on the vertical stabilizer, I use the air drill because this doesn't quite have the RPMs to, to get a good clean hole. Um, and speaking of holes, this is a number 30 drill bit and these are basically they have an Allen key wrench. They're kind of got a spring on them. These are for the number 30 size, but when you drill in, it, it stops your your drill from going all the way in and marring up your aluminum it just kind of stops it there without it's kind of a nylon material or kind of a smooth material there you need a step drill bit use this in the um, the tail drag or pull handle to make the big hole um, it only goes to three quarters this is a really nice one from my RV kit I had to go to Harbor Freight to go up to the rest of the seven eighths, I believe is what the, the final hole on one of the things was. Your nice file, file away all the different, uh, and have the, the bend tabs on the skins and stuff like that, file it smooth. Smaller files, scotch bright wheel I put on the drill with this mandrel. This one's kind of, obviously I've been using this one a lot. Little file here. Um, this wheel, there was a um, Zenith Cruiser build on YouTube. Um, basically, they recommended this. You get it from Amazon. It's got Scotch Brite and uh, sand, emery board sandpaper, and it, it flaps. It's a little flapper. It can get your edges nice and clean and deburred. Um, similar grit, um, 240 grit emery paper. It's not like sandpaper, it's different. It's for metal, Scotch Brite, maroon. Deburring for holes. I don't have that fancy. Uh, deburring tool everybody's using that deburs both sides I just have the one side and then the edge deburr get these on Amazon or wherever um, Clecos I got both 332nd I use those there's a lot of uh, undersized holes for instance the, the trailing edge of I believe the elevator or the horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer has um, 332nd holes and I drill 332nd first use those clicos and then up to drill to 1 8th I typically use a um, a reamer tough drill to number 30 because it makes a nice smooth hole um, I ended with talking about the reamer um, so here is the number 30 reamer this is actually a replacement I just bought. They, I got a six flute, meaning there's six flutes. It's got a point on it. This one's a, a four flute. It was a cheaper. Um, what ended up happening is I set my drill down. I dropped it and my original reamer got bent, so I couldn't use it. So I believe I bought that from Avery Tools back in the day, or it might have been Cleveland. Um, the only place I can find it, Cleveland didn't have it. Um, Avery's no longer in business. This uh, MSC tool, it has lots of different tools and stuff like that. Here's a catalog that came with my order. I just received that. Um, these are little containers for the reamers. But, um, so those are really good cleanup holes. If your rivet won't quite fit, just give a little ream in there. Um, it just kind of is like a file that kind of just goes down in there, cleans up the hole a little bit. You also, from 330 seconds, I up drill. This has got a point. I can up drill to number 30, make perfectly round holes. When I bent my reamer, I had to do uh, some drilling, and um, obviously the drill bit made a little more a mess of the hole than a reamer would. Uh, speaking of drill bits, I got these from ATS um, Aircraft Tool Supply. 
basically your cobalt uh, 30 number 30 drill bits um, these are fairly inexpensive and when they get dull you just replace them uh, going on as far as when you're drilling you need to line up your holes I got a number 40 punch a number 30 punch um, basically this is from an old RV toolkit if you have a friend with an RV build they have lots of these different tools but you can kind of put this in the hole get your rivets lined up and this also um, goes in the hole and if you get get the number 30 in, you know you can get the rivet in um, you got a, a spring loaded punch you can pop out rivets using this basically you put this on the mandrel after you know if you have a rivet you have to drill out um, you put on the mandrel the rivet pop it down and then take your n number 30 bits and just drill down off it takes off the head aluminum rivets very easy um, I got a various uh, rulers and measuring devices I have a um, caliper digital caliper Harbor Freight so a um, some angles here these are basically Home Depot um, looks like a three-quarter inch angle these are useful when you're doing your horizontal um, stabilizer and your vertical stabilizer I pop a Clico in each of the tooling holes on the end rivets put this on top of the Clicos and then level it off with the level this is just a level from uh, basically from Harbor Freight make sure you if you have two levels you match them to each other um, I also have digital level you can kind of look at the digital level and, and get them really really on accurate the bubble levels are a little less accurate uh, and you'll use a digital level like this from home depot a husky brand you use that on um, all your parts your um, especially your horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer and then when you get to the wings one part that i want to really emphasize is this uh close in pop rivet tool so what this does it allows you to get next to a flange or on the horizontal stabilizer on the outer ribs there's a real uh, tight area where you have to rivet so what this does is it kind of gives an angle to the mandrel of the rivet and allows your gun to kind of point away from the from the flange so you basically use this hole the mandrel goes through that you put this against the part so it's tight and then your rivet knows your rivet gun goes up against the top part and basically it, it angles away um, it's hard to show with one hand but it, it helps to get your nose of your rivet gun into a tight spot and it, it angles it away and then um, creates a backstop that sets the rivet really nice I'm kind of miscellaneous stuff moving on um, when you get Clicos make sure you get the bigger Clicos for the, uh, the dash six rivets for hinges and stuff like that I got some Clico clamps um, with the longer grip and the shorter grip here when you're drilling um, I like to use some sort of lubrication this is bow lube it's uh, built for or designed for bowing when they're drilling uh, their holes this is kind of a wax substance and then I also have a paste so this is more of a paste it kind of um, keeps your drill bit sharp and the holes clean and stuff like that I have your countersink cage cutters uh, this particular one I um, make sure you get the 120 degree bit if you have an RV kit you're gonna get the 100 110 I believe it is on these I ordered an extra um, countersink number 30 with a number 30 uh, pilot hole and it drills or countersinks at 120 degrees for your countersink holes for instance on the wing when you countersink and then uh, th then you need to um, do some dimples and these are 120 degree dimple dies either for a pneumatic dimpler or a hand dimpler uh, you would you would use this on uh, the first part you use this on is a horizontal stabilizer there's some nose ribs that need flush rivets so you, you know in your build you can order your 120 degree dies and 120 degree countersink tool otherwise the rivets aren't going to fit correctly on those countersink rivets if you ever need an angle drill this is just an attachment um, all this stuff is like I said from a previous RV toolkit you just basically it gives you a 90 degree angle drill on here I can put it into my air drill or my electric drill and then I have a couple different bits number 30 number 40 
and then some bigger bigger bits for screw holes and stuff like that you got you know these real small bits to get into uh tight tight quarters and everything you're gonna need a um eventually torque wrenches i do have this older uh torque wrench it's snap on really nice this is a quarter inch um goes down to about 20 inch pounds i believe no, it does. It goes from like uh, maybe 60 inch pounds. It's not. It doesn't go down too low. So I ended up buying what's called a beam torque wrench. I'm not used this yet, but this is for your like A and three stuff. This is real small. It goes down to about 10 inch pounds. So you could always, when you're torquing, this little uh, pointer goes to the correct inch pounds or newton meters. And so these are for real like smaller A and three and four stuff um, where you you don't want to over torque especially A and three. And then one thing I didn't originally get I used treated two by fours which are down here and plywood worktop. I don't know if I said it before but I would use MDF if I had to do over. MDF won't warp like plywood you get it nice and level. But I. Uh, ordered through midwest steel and aluminum this is 6061 i think it's t6 i think they have 6053 which is like architectural grade aluminum this was a little bit cheaper actually than the architectural grade it's uh, about an eighth inch thick it's a three inch wide by six inch and you'll use this to um, place your various assemblies on to level them and um, for instance your horizontal stabilizer, your vertical stabilizer, even your rudder, you can place it on. So what I've done, I've ordered a 72 inch piece. I am gonna cut 18 inches off, and then you'll have you know, the remaining 54 inches for the wing when, you're, when you have it on your, um, you're building your wing. So you can have that 54 inches is plenty of length. You have an extra 18 if you need to build another assembly on top of that. You need some extra um, support somewhere. And um, I would definitely use this to build your trim tab on. So the trim tabs a little less than uh, about 68 inches or something like that. So if you had 72 inches, that'd be perfect. Build your trim tab on this for sure. Cause I ended up, what I did is I had the elevator on two by fours and um, tried to build the trim tab across the two by fours and i think it got a little bit messed up i may have to redo the trim tab but if i i had this flat surface this six inch by three inch flat surface here i could you could build the trim tab on top of this very easy alternatively i've seen photos of the trim tab on top of this spar here this wing spar this is actually fairly flat and um there's a picture on uh, Rand's their pictures for their build. They looks like their trim tab. They're building on the top of the flat part of the spar. So that's interesting. Gives you a flat surface. Maybe that's a, a possibility. So um, the other thing is a uh, kind of an edge tool. You roll this along the edge to kind of give it a little bit of a, a kind of a, a bend towards the metal. This is going to be helpful on your vertical stabilizer. When you got the nose skin and then you got flat main skin, the nose skin overlaps the flat skin. You want to put an edge on that, kind of crank, crank the edge towards the inside and it will lay real nice and flat when you get your rivets on it and it won't have a waviness or anything like that. That also is good for getting a little bit of a um, flat edge on your leading edge of your um, wing skin. I would do the tool on the wing skin as well as your edge rolling tool. I didn't do it as much out here on the outboard edge. And I can kind of feel a little bit, a little bit slightly pulled up on there. I can kind of see it once it's upside down. I felt a little bit when I had it right side up, but I can see a little bit of the skin is just didn't get quite enough bend on that. So I definitely want to make sure that I do that on the right wing. But anyway, so this is, Basically, a lot of the tools I, I ended up starting with um, adding the tool. I think the, the one of the ones that you need to add early is this close um, 
close in riveter a aircraft tool supply and i believe maybe cleveland just uh, look around different i don't think your craft spruce has this uh, this one's like a called an rv12 close riveter or close flange riveter it basically is an angle with a hole through it for your mandrel the rivet fits on there it allows your gun to lean over more of a little bit of an angle and then um, one last thing speaking of a rivet gun this one's really nice it doesn't have the big trigger coming off of it it has a nice little trigger and it's real real easy you gotta make sure you're not don't you have your finger on it get your your gun set and then press it and it's just a real nice smooth press so this riveter is i got the idea to get this riveter the link for it jeff and adam built a zenith their youtube father and son team building a zenith 750 cruiser they had a kind of a tool segment kind of like i'm doing and they really recommended this riveter it doesn't have and it's uh it rivets you know just fine it's you know from amazon they also recommended the the 3m flapper and I'll, um, I'll throw a link into their, the build segment where they talk about the tools they use. Um, and then a lot of these other, other tools, I kind of got some ideas from different people, like a smaller 12 volt drill was from a, um, the bear Hawk build. It was a, a gentleman who is, um, building a bear Hawk in his garage and he had recommended getting a small 12 volt drill versus those larger drills. You can't set them down like this but you could definitely easier to hold that's kind of the bad and good i've dropped this thing a couple times that's how i bent my reamer that i had in there is it had a reamer in there just kind of going along and bam it fell off the table had to buy a new reamer and other parts that i just got harbor freights i believe did less than 10 bucks you got 20 bins here they mount on rails i had a another pack i use um, over there against my slat wall on my little workspace over here so you know when i'm going along and riveting i have my different rivets these are really easy to have with you on your workbench and then i uh, put a little tape on here 41s 42s 43s and um, they basically keep keep your rivets in there and easy to access. So I bought another another pack of those things. Over here I got some solid rivets from Aircraft Spruce. Or I don't have enough rivets for a part or something like that. I could just throw a solid in. These are good to replace aluminum rivets. Do not use these to replace stainless steel rivets. They're not as strong. These are just basically aluminum squeezed rivets. They've got the, they're not countersunk. They have aluminum heads on them. So I just had have them in case I need an extra rivet somewhere. I got the tools to set those rivets, uh, no problem. I'd rather have a, these are super cheap. I can set a couple of these in an easy access place, and not have to worry about um, trying to find some more, more expensive uh, pooled rivets. Okay, I've droned on long enough. Like, subscribe, leave your questions in the comments. I'll have a new video out soon. Thank you for watching.